response video to this Romanian guy who isn't the, the good Romanian guy who, you know, I don't know where he went, but I guess he had to get serious about school and all that kind of stuff so he couldn't play on YouTube anymore. But I miss Romanian guy. Anyway, I don't, I don't know, this guy I don't care for too much. Um, uh, he's, I don't know what he's playing, devil's advocate. I don't know the point of it. <clears throat> um, you know, he speaks good enough English, I think, to know what a devil's advocate position is. And maybe that's what he's doing. But there's no point in doing that without the context of the counter argument. Um, so I don't get that. Um, so, yeah, I'm just not liking him anymore. <laughs> um, uh, it, because, yeah, he's going to force me to keep making arguments I've already made. I've already explained and he's going to bring up these old, dead, idiotic arguments um, that have no relevance, really. That they're, This one especially. And this one especially annoys me because it's pseudoscience. It's nonsense. People don't understand um, the science, and yet they have opinions. And it's really irritating. And that's the substance of my irritation. Not that this has anything to do with antinatalism. The fact that, there, okay, so we were on the Drake equation basically again, and how prolific life is. And somehow that has relevance to the mechanism that builds life. It doesn't have any relevance whatsoever. We are never going anywhere in the universe as human beings. The best we could do is send probes into the universe, and uh, obviously they're going to have limited competence. <laughs> you know, um, but anyway, this is this is just stupid. It's it's. I'm see. I'm sorry. And we have nothing to tell them. What are we going to tell the rest of the universe? Oh, you're fucked. Yeah, you evolved, and you have giant tentacles, and and pus leaks out of them, and you get and, and microbes infect them, and yeah, we're not going to have any. What are we going to say? Soak your 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 trunk in Epsom salts, or snort the Epsom salts, and you'll get high. I don't know. Our advice isn't going to be very pleasant, is it? Build yourself a nuke and blow yourself to bits because you're fucked. Because evolution is stupid. It's a dumb force of idiotic competition and selection. Yeah, that's going to be our advice, I think. That, that would be our advice to a Tyrannosaurus, wouldn't it? You know? I mean, really, would we tell Tyrannosaurus, Yeah, just keep it up, buddy. Yeah, rip those fuckers to pieces. It's really great. Especially when you can spread their entrails over like 50 or 60 yards. It's really cool when you do that. And they're still trying to crawl away. And you kind of pull them in by, you know, like spaghetti. You pull their, their guts in like spaghetti and pull them back into your mouth. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, fuck you. you. People are, you're just, but anyway, the science is pitiful. So anyway, the stupid Akinakavidi guy guy, right? So this is an example of what I'm talking about. A completely unqualified opinion. You know, people think they, they're entitled to an opinion. I heard Carl Sagan say, Fluffy Bunny, Fluffy Bunny. And therefore, uh, you know, nature's great because Carl Sagan said Fluffy Bunny. Um, you know, and so some people will use these, you know, a few scientists will say crazy, stupid, bold things that are outside their expertise, and that's unfortunate. And people will cling on to this nonsense and this gibberish and think everybody's entitled to say that because this other scientist said that. And they're not. Okay? There are scientists out there who tell you there's a God. There are. Now, no one pays any attention. No one should pay any attention. And you know it. So anyway, this is just such ignorance. And I'm pissed off because I, apparently I'm the only, uh, you know, available expert on um, probability. I mean, I actually took a course on it, unlike the rest of these assholes. So I actually know something about the subject. Um, five whole people in the class. <laughs> it was so popular. Uh, anyway, I needed the credits. What can I say? I wanted to get out of school early. and um, I'd like to say I took it because I thought probability would be a great fun. But no, the truth is I took it because it's five fucking credits. Uh, anyway, this is a whole different subject. It was high school credits. Okay, yeah, so I took a probability course in high school. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I bet they don't offer those anymore. Uh, it, it, it's just too much competing with how to, how to, have ma how to wear ma matching socks. And that's how challenged they are now. But anyway, let's not get insulting. All right. Here, let's just read the comment. Because it's just, this just illustrates that these people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And yet they think they're entitled to an opinion. They don't understand the science, 
So anyway, let's first point out there's no such thing as probability, okay? Even all the scientists are wrong on this one. I guess I'm the only guy who's got this one figured out. Probability is an illusion. It's bullshit. All you're doing is is quantifying um, the, the, the error in your capacity to approximate inevitability. All there is is inevitability. And all you can do is try to guesstimate it in, in, in inevitability. And, and what forces you to guess is the fact that there's unknown variables. And so that's what probability is made out of, is the influence of unknown variables. And that's all it is. And so in circumstances where the variables are constant, uh, you can establish probability because you don't know what the variables are, but you know the variables are constant. And so then you can make a guesstimate based on the constancy of the variable, not evidence of what it is this one particular time. And that so, so invents probability. But it's not probability. It's still inevitability. And you're still guessing at what the inevitable outcome will be. Um, see, that's probably way over your head right there. I probably already, you're, you're, the fluff heads are, you're already fucked. <laughs> I just blew wind and your brain got all stirred up and golf. No, gone. I'm sorry to be demeaning, but I'm, this shit pisses me off. These people talking way over their knowledge base. All right, life evolved once, it can evolve again and again and again. So you had to reiterate the again and again and again. There's absolutely no way to say that rationally, logically, evidentially, reasonably. It's not a reasonable statement in light of scientific knowledge. There's no no evidence from one event. You can't glean any probabilistic evidence from one event. All right, none. Absolutely, it's vacant. It's zero information is created by one event. All right, so here's, I'll try to make a metaphor. Yahtzee, okay, a little dice game, right? You have this five, five dice, I think it is, six dice, whatever. You throw the dice and blah, blah, blah. So let's say what are <clears throat> what's the probability like how many times do I have to throw dice <laughs> for all the dice to stack up right on top of each other like one two three four five six could it ever happen is it possible well we could say it's possible because we can imagine it alright so that gives us some indication of possibility but is it really possible is there any way can, can dice be thrown at any angle, at any way? Is there any possible way a human could throw these dice where they could ever, 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 ever all end up in sequence in the exact center of a circle, in the exact center of the throwing range? I would argue that the physics make it impossible. Okay, you'd have to have walls, you'd have to have circumstances that would make it more possible, but just throwing dice on a table, impossible can't happen. We can imagine it, but the physics won't allow it. All right. Um, <clears throat> so let's say we create a circumstance where somehow it is actually possible, but it requires uh, dice to take specific trajectories. Okay, that's a must be. So and, and, and it has to be a perfect storm. Every dice has to take its trajectory, and it can only happen if it happens this way. Okay, dice number four can't take dice number two's path and blah, 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 and all that stuff. It has to be each dice runs its path, and that's the only way it can happen. All right, but it's still impossible. And it's impossible in the sense that we don't have enough eternity, you know, that's within our grasp, within our experimental range, to test it. We would have to keep doing it and doing it and doing it, and we could do it for, like, a long, long time. Like what seems like eternity, but just you know, only one one millionth of eternity, <laughs> right? Um, and yeah, we st we couldn't make it happen. We could never throw the dice that perfectly. We could never throw them the way they needed to be thrown for that event to happen. And this is getting longer than I wanted to go. Um, so so I mean, you get, I think you should be able to glean from this an understanding that if we did make it happen, it wouldn't mean that it can happen again. It wouldn't mean, it might be something that only happens one in, you know, a big giant chunk of eternity. <laughs> you like, you know, a really huge chunk of eternity for it to ever even happen once. Okay, let alone again. Um, there are things in eternity 
that only happen once, and they'll never happen again. I mean, I could utter a sentence, moo, shoo, boo, boo, do, boo, boo, goo, boo, boo, do, boo, 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 boo. No one's going to re-utter that sentence. You could go eternity, 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 and nothing, it's never going to be spoken again, ever. Um, there's lots of events in this universe right now that are taking place, like the arrangement of all the planets or something. That arrangement will never be identical. It'll never be exactly the same ever again. It wouldn't matter. You could run it forever and ever and ever and ever. It's just not going to happen. There are singular events in eternity. <laughs> there just are. Um, you can't use up every possibility. Because every possibility, all you have to do is change one tiny quanta, one tiny atom, and you've changed its identity. You've changed the structure. Um, and there's, you know, I don't even want to get into how many quanta, how many elements of matter there are in the universe. But it's so much that it might as well be infinite amount. So anyway, it doesn't matter. But the point is, you can, you don't glean any evidence of possibility. I mean, of, of probability through possibility. Because something's possible does not make it probable. Does not make it likely to happen a second time. Okay. I mean, there's a ton of things that are more easily, easy, more, could happen more easily than life on Earth. I mean, there could be a, um, the formation of a diamond with an image of in Mendum right in the center. It's probably more likely than the existence of life on Earth. And, you know, we haven't seen one of those diamonds, so do we assume that they can't happen, or they don't happen, or they don't exist? We can't assume any of that. We, we rationally assume that we haven't checked all the diamonds. <sighs> Secondly, we don't know if consciousness is a real result of DNA or sentience, which I, I find a preposterous statement. DNA or sentience? It's obviously a result of DNA molecules. It's obviously a result of having a brain, and a brain is the DNA code. Um, sentience is a, a substrate of consciousness. You're not conscious without sentience. They might as well be interchangeable word, words. I mean, don't they both mean the same thing? You can feel? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we, I mean, I mean really, are, do, are you people really dumb enough to think that human beings who were walking around two million years ago without a language uh, were somehow already special? I mean, they had a brain that was almost the same as the one we have now, but they weren't doing anything different than every other baboon on the plane. I mean, do you think consciousness is something only humans have? All mammals think and feel. They're conscious and sentient. And it's a function of their biology. We think it is, but we ultimately don't know. Like I, like I said, you don't know. I'm quite convinced by the scientific evidence. I know where my biology comes from. I know the process is called evolution, and that it took four billion years to get here. So anyway, but how is this relevant? Again, this is the, the key point I should keep making here. How is this relevant? You've butchered the math and the science. You can't ascertain probability from our one event existence. Um, and like I said, if you really strike up the science, if you really look at the science, it's incredibly complex, the, the, the crap that we're built on. We're not built on just one perfect storm. It's perfect storm after perfect storm after perfect storm after perfect storm to get to these different plateaus of functionality. Insects have been here a lot longer than our kind, mammals, and none of them did any of this you know, high-minded intelligence. They didn't even do the low-minded intelligence. They're doing a very crude intelligence because it's a functional intelligence. And it's only through aberration and unique circumstance and niche environments and all the rest of that stuff that we ever acquired what we have. And we have no evidence that it could ever, in a million, trillion, zillion rolls of the dice, that we could ever arrange them exactly that way again. And like every lottery winner, we're sitting here saying, boy, that was easy. <laughs> no, it might not have been easy at all. You tell me, how does, how does the winner of the lottery know the difference between a one in a trillion chance of winning and a one in two chance of winning? They can't tell. All they know is they won. 
they can't tell how improbable their victory was. Alright, let's play some of this shit. Some problem of uh, nah. essence versus degree. Uh, let's say we finally come to the destruction of the human species. Uh, that would not mean, however, destruction of the animal world too, of vegetation, etc., not the destruction of the DNA. Right, so I think you've been in my stick cam rooms. You know that's not what uh, most of the anti nihilists on YouTube are talking about. They're not talking about just eliminating humans and then that's it. That's all. That's all, folks. You want to point me to them? Who are you arguing with? Who are you devil advocating? What, what philosopher are you devil advocating against? Even David Benatar says pretty clearly in his book, he talks about animals are in the same dilemma as us, and I don't think he would advocate for the uh, elimination of the human species and just leave the animals to suffer and die forever. So um, who are you arguing with here? Who are you devil advocating against? What argument are you responding to? Because it's not my argument, it's not anybody else's argument that I know of. But let's extend the area. Even the destruction of all DNA on Earth. That doesn't mean, however, destruction of life, of DNA forms on thousands or hundreds of thousands of stupid planets everywhere in the, in the universe. Yeah, and what evidence? Why, again, if, even if they existed, how would our realization of the futility of the process of evolution do them any good? How would we get our information to them? How would we even, if they're in the form of a Tyrannosaurus, we wouldn't be communicating with them. Um, so, I mean, you're not going to be able to extend this. I mean, I, I, I've said in the past, too, that if you want to keep enough human beings behind to create sanitizing robots to send out into space, it's certainly okay with me. <laughs> okay? Um, but it doesn't change the fundamental conclusion that any life form evolving through competitive selection is going to be a piece of shit. All right, there's nothing else it can be. The competition doesn't doesn't reward the 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 best. It it rewards the most sinister. Okay, it makes monsters. That's why, fucking look at bugs and look at tyrannosaurus and look at great white sharks. Look at the winners in 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 biology. Crocodiles. Okay, they're not you know, intellectual bunnies. They're fucking monsters. So then, the honest and simple question comes, what is the point exactly in, one, the disappearing of the human race, and two, the disappearing of all life on Earth? Well, duh. I mean, this really is a fundamental argument. So there's just, you think this is a counter argument to the argument that it's not sufficiently efficient, that it causes harm and satisfies absolutely no function, produces nothing but a delusion of gratification. No one is speculating on how deprivated the universe is because there's no Martians. Explain to me how there's deprivation because of the absence of Martians, and then maybe you'll have an argument here, but you have none. This has already been argued. It's already been refuted. It's a nonsense argument. You're saying, well, there's nothing to be gained by uh, preventing the harm. Well, that's an idiotic, nonsensical, moronic statement that has already been refuted. If three DNA survives well and safe in the universe, continuing to produce suffering second by second until the end of time. Uh, yeah, so this is like saying there's ten cancer patients and there'd be no point in curing one of them. Of course there would. If you resolve the problem on planet A, that's still good. And until you can produce evidence that planet A has some hope of curing a problem on planet B, this is an idiotic argument. I mean, even if extraterrestrials were even to contact us at some point, we actually did hear a message, in all likelihood, they're already dead. Their planet already got destroyed in, by some calamity because they're so distant from us in time and space that they don't even exist anymore. We could hear their help, and it's just way too late for us to help. I observed that one of the 
recurrent counter argument to that quality argument is always a quantitative one in an analogical shift if we say one victim from suffering of cancer aids progeria or some other bad thing isn't it enough sure is it is important but then it's like saying the we would all be dead in 100 years anyway and not suffer anymore. Can I use that as a quantitative argument too? Yeah, well go ahead, but isn't 100 years of suffering bad? Again, you're talking like it's like it's the, like there's no difference. 1 million victims, 10 million victims, so if I it, it would be the same thing. 6 million Jews in the Holocaust or 6 billion. Same difference, no difference. No, it's only a magnitude of a thousand times more. Oh, yeah, we'll just ignore that. I mean, of, of course it's quantitative. The whole value equation is a statement of quantitative. Every human being lives their life in very quantitative terms. We see how they spend their money. It's quantitative. If they could spend their money to buy immunity from cancer, you don't think they'd spend their money to do it? You don't think it'd have a quantitative value if you could just buy your way out of your suffering? You don't think you would do it? Yeah, I think you would. And to say that we'll save lots of suffering is great and important task, but unfortunately not relevant for our problem. Well, you say it's not relevant. I say it's the only thing that's relevant. I say what's irrelevant is your delusion that human beings need to be here, that human beings are serving some function or they have some capacity to serve a function. That's a delusion. That's absolute nonsense. Since the DNA molecule will perfectly, perfectly survive. Uh, well, again, perfectly survive what? You have absolutely no evidence. There is only one bit of evidence. One time, a DNA molecule was created inside a cellular membrane and created a reproductive organism. All the evidence is, is that, that of that one event. There is no evidence of any second event or third event or even human beings haven't even synthetically made an event yet. So, um, this is crap. We must always keep in mind the essence of the problem. Either the yeah, the essence of the problem is, as I've, I've pointed out and as you've heard the argument, okay, it's no different than the essence of the problem of a nuclear power plant. Well, if you can't build one that's fail-safe, then you can't build one because you're going to have to put it in somebody's backyard and you're going to have to make somebody pay the full price for having nuclear power and that's unfair fundamentally unfair you can't do it ethically you can't do it responsibly it's an irresponsible act it's an irresponsible act to force more suffering on sentient beings to satisfy not even a need for energy but some delusion of need you want to create future things to consume something that doesn't need to exist. The future things need to exist somehow merely because you think they need to consume the thing that doesn't need to exist. I mean, it's all contrived. You're, you're, self, you're, you're creating circular logic to justify the existence of something. Enemy's DNA itself, this crazy molecule that produces life sentient beings and sometimes consciousness in the universe. Well, again, you'll keep saying in the universe, uh, implying that it's in the universe in some other place but planet Earth. And you have not one shred of evidence to justify that presumption or assumption. No scientific evidence, no mathematical evidence, no evidence whatsoever. And in that case, it has to be destroyed everywhere. Either it's just a quantitative gain hick at nunc game and then we can destroy it here and there yeah well though, exactly well the point is is that the fundamental argument of anti-natalism which is don't put people at unnecessary risk okay so all the unnecessary beings can be eliminated we can eliminate all the animals aren't going to fly through space and save the rest of the universe right we can assume that one already so they can peacefully go and then we can just sit there and have human beings that have that as a mission statement and not watching the World Series or playing ball at the Olympics, right? And instead, they're devoted to their one function, which is to go figure out if they can find some other life forms to rescue from the dilemma of their evolution. More or less. 
if you didn't defeat life itself, any reduction of suffering is not a victory, but a victory. Well, again, this is stupid. Any reduction of suffering is not a victory. So if I knocked 10 million people off the death rate in World War II, uh, it wasn't a victory. I didn't restore them to their family. They didn't have sex with their wife. They didn't have a life and a, uh, a whole thing, right? So, so it's somehow not a benefit to reduce the death toll in World War II by 10 million. That wouldn't be a good idea. I'm sorry, that logic is pathetic. If it, DNA wins, DNA has, it's like DNA has us trapped in its cosmological scale. Well, again, so can, you have no evidence of this cosmological DNA. You have no evidence of DNA even on this planet that has something other to do with that first reproducing cell, let alone DNA floating around in the universe replicating. No evidence. The tragedy is not local, it's universal. Well, so, <laughs> again, just a preposterous pile of pseudo science. No fucking scientific, reasonable, logical, mathematical, disciplined logic can draw that conclusion. It's not within the realm of reasonable scientific conclusion. The real antinatalist purpose would have to be the destruction of DNA's home, the entire universe, an impossibility. Well, you say, see, so you know it's possible that there's DNA in the universe, or probable, you're even saying, um, and yet you don't think there's some mechanism in the universe that can be triggered that would cause the entire thing to black hole and collapse on itself. So you're saying, like, we've invented, that we, we found the power of the, the atom, well, you know, we found out one little bit of it, how to break down the strong force in the, in the atom, okay, and release the energy. Um, you don't think we can find another mechanism like that that controls, that, that has the same effect on the universe, that creates a chain reaction that goes beyond just radioactive material, that the chain reaction could unravel all hydrogen atoms, it caused all of them to degrade and fall apart. You don't think there's any such mechanism in the universe? You're saying em emphatically it can't happen, it's not possible? Amazing, amazing hypocrisy and duplicity. You know there's DNA molecules in the cosmos, yet you, you, you're, you're also quite confident that there's no um, mechanism in the universe that could cause the entire universe to collapse. Even destruction of the whole universe could be, I don't know, reversible one day by some crazy physical rebirth, new Big Bang, some cosmological twist or catastrophe. So, antinatalism, although a strong moral doctrine with solid existential intuitions at its base, is not an action doctrine also. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, right. No, no, we don't have enough evidence to conclude that it's unintelligent design that a retard is controlling the system and that, that it's a bad building, that it doesn't function as anything, it doesn't do anything. The living little squirmies aren't accomplishing anything but stealing each other's shit, all right? And you don't win by stealing each other's shit. Jesus Christ. Zero-sum game played imperfectly means negative-sum game. Um, yeah, fuck you. Something with value in praxis, which is tragic. It goes nowhere. It cannot win in essence, only in degree. <laughs> Whatever. Only in degree. A partial victory isn't any victory? That's nonsense. And again, I don't... That, that's presuming your idiotic claim that there's life in the universe that needs rescuing and that it's somehow possible that the human race is going to go rescue it. Um, neither of those, I think, could, you could, you could, I don't think you could draw even a grotesque cartoon explaining how this could happen. Let me see the, let me see you make the movie that isn't a fucking comedy. It would be, it, like saying, let's say, save some souls, 
and then watch the eternal d damnation of everybody else everywhere till the end of time. <laughs> well, again, what do the two have to do with each other? You save two. So if I rescue two people from the sinking Titanic, it's not an accomplishment because the other 953 died? Well, fuck you, it's, that's a stupid statement. But the good anti-natalist premises, those are still valid and we can still use them. With these solid premises in mind, the true goal for mankind, big words but this is truth, would be more likely evolve in species, enhance, eradicate suffering. Oh yeah, uh, words, yeah. No, no possibility of a, your eugenics plan coming to fruition. So I don't know where this is exactly going. You know, you're gonna remake the human species. Yeah, I wonder if it's gonna be wearing a baseball cap. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, Charlie. Genetics. Some forms of self-evolving. Self-evolving. What the hell is that? That is that isn't even a rational terminology. Self-evolving. You can't use the word evolution and self and make that make any fucking sense. Self. Evolution is an environmental pressure. Okay. There has to be an environment for the thing to exist in for it to evolve. This would be one, at least, of the true practical goal of the human being. Oh, yeah, right. Practical goal. You don't have... A, there's not a practical chance that you're going to survive the next hundred years without fucking goddamn mega blood war, you stupid crazy fuck. Species, if we fully embrace the anti-natalist premises. Suicide by extinction, well... It's not suicide by extinction. So again, this rhetoric is just bullshit. It's, it's fucking recognizing that it's turning the engine off. Do you call that extinction? I extinguished the car by turning the engine off. It's not that it's not spectacular, comforting with a strange magnetism, fascinating as a projection, but it has no end. It's a vain radicality. Predicament. Yeah, whatever. That's your mumbo jumbo. That's your religion, fella. Okay, there's no reasonable, rational argument. There's no, there's no evidence for me to follow to that conclusion. I don't, I don't like Nietzsche. But sometimes we have to remember that question. You know, when Zarathustra asks, uh, "What is the ape compared to the man? A shame and a disgrace." What is the man compared to the overman? The shame and the disgrace. And yeah. then adds the famous... Yeah, bullshit. Okay, the ape's got so much more integrity than either one of you as a, as a sen sensitive um, um, animal. And um, your intelligence is just a, a, a weapon in the hands of your ape. Okay, you haven't grown up. Uh, um, you use intelligence to serve you. You don't use intelligence to serve logic and necessity. Man is a rope between the stretched, a rope stretched between the animal and the overman, a rope over the, the, the abyss. Yeah, whatever, God. You're going to create gods, are you? You think there's some, there's some practical uh, capacity for intelligence to do anything else but serve messes made by your overman. Okay, your, your, your supreme beings will only make messes. And that, that's the only function of intelligence, is to clean up the messes your delusions create. It's a good intuition there for the 19th century. Uh, we are in that stage of shame and transition now. I know antinatalism has its roots in the philosophy of existence, Schopenhauer. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't have roots in any of that shit. It has its roots in the facts. Evolution, shithead. Go look it up. It's not a good story. Existentialists, Sioran, well, we can even go further to the pre-Socratics. But as an open thought, a structured thought, antinatalism is young. We can keep the premises as they are true and imagine a practical conclusion. Yeah, 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 right, right. There's no practical way to play tick 
tic-tac-toe. It's a game for retards. So the only way you can keep playing it is you have to maintain stupidity and retardation and lack of knowledge. When you have knowledge that your psychology is just that psychology of want, that it creates every need it satisfies, that it does in fact satisfy no functional need in the universe, then you realize, oh, yeah, I see. It's self-defeating. Not the greed victories in their constitutive deception, but the essence of the problem entirely. Yeah, the essence of the problem is planet Earth, all right? And until you have some evidence of any realistic possibility of DNA doing anything anywhere else in the universe, you don't even have an example of it doing something on this planet. Even though it's covered with body parts, it has, the, it has body parts that are actually like a foot deep on the entire surface of this planet. And yet, none of those body parts have zombied into reproductivity. Again. How come? You have all the chemistry, you have all kinds of environments, and yet you don't have a second occurrence. All right, enough said. Idiots everywhere.